Hi everyone. Um, I'm excited to say a few things about Eun Lee's story extra. I had the privilege of working with Eun uh, as a master's student at UC Davis um, a number of years ago and um, this story is, is a really interesting one to use when discussing plot, uh, partly because it has a surprising plot that kind of um, takes an interesting turn halfway through the story. So last week I talked about how the opening of Pilgrims teaches you how to read the story and how it set up um, this mood of unease and tension uh, and the mention of strangers that it kind of um, perpetuated throughout the story and, and followed through. And so this story starts very differently um, in a way that also teaches you how to read it. And so um, a few things to note are this kind of um, interest in things things taking a double meaning or taking a surprising turn and so the first example is right in the first paragraph when we read about uh you know hereby we confirm conrad lynn may is, is honorably honorably retired from the red star garment factory we get this fact and then in the next sentence we're told what this actually means is that um the company's bankrupt granny lynn is not going to be receiving her pension we don't know for how long so ready you have this subverting of expectations and telling you the truth lurking underneath the surface. And then again, we have this kind of surprising turn in the next two phrases when Granny Lynn is talking to Auntie Wang and Auntie Wang says, there's always a road when you get to the mountain, um, talking about, you know, finding a new path, finding a way, finding hope. Uh, and then she, Granny Lynn just says, and there's a Toyota wherever there's a road. So um, it's kind of this funny um, reference to a new commercial that is ingrained in her head and instead of making it this inspirational speech it's really about um, you know capitalism and acquiring goods right in a way that is hard for her to do when she just lost her pension um, and has to eat a radish for dinner so that's kind of the first the first few hints that the story is going to not be what you might expect and then um, you know and we kind of get that throughout the plot of the story where the first half is making you think that, hey, this is a story about how Granny Lin is going to um, take care of Old Tang and find a way to maybe get money when he dies or maybe develop some kind of love for him when she cares for him. We don't know, but that's where what we're told the story is going to be about um, for the first half and literally halfway through the story around page 10, 11, um, Old Tang dies and the story's not over. It's halfway over, right? And then the real story or the second part of that story is about um, Granny Lin and her relationship with um, with Kang and how that is going to affect her view of the world and her view on love. And um, when talking about plot, Riley discussed the difference between plot and story. Um, something I'm interested in, or another way that I look at plot is thinking about the long lines of tension and the short lines of tension. And so the long line of tension in the story to me is in the title. It's the title extra, uh, right? And so um, it's about how Granny Lynn is this single unmarried woman um, who just lost her pension is going to navigate China, the world, um, as an extra, how she's going to make it work, how that, what that's going to mean for her financially, but also spiritually, right? So um, the first half of the story is about her figuring things out financially, but being with old, old Tang kind of stirs something else in her. She begins to not love him, but feel an intimacy towards him when she's bathing him, when he's, he's undressed. She's thinking, you know, wondering what his body looked like when he was young. Um, you see her starting to kind of imagine a world where she, she could have these feelings, right? Um, and then that's carried through to uh, the second half to Kang, where she, um, it's less focused on the finances and, keep, you know, um, just surviving and more. And that's how the, the story, the second half starts, where she's eating the leftover food. Um, but then it becomes a love story. It kind of subverts your expectations. She's no longer focused on meeting her basic needs, she, she has a higher purpose, right? Um, and you see, so that, that long line of tension of her being an extra is continued to the story. And then and then the line the, the line of the old Tang kind of, you know, comes to the end when he dies, but it, it's it's carried through in a new form with, with, um, with Kang. And you even see those two stories being connected because Tang, um, old Tang is connected to Kang. When you see Kang, um, the, the moment where she smells him and he smells kind of sweaty, but like laundry and like a deer person. And then she says, it's like how old, old tank smelled. And then, um, later on at the very, at the, the kind of heartbreaking, you know, toward the end of the story, when the boy looks at her, um, 
after he's lost and then found and is upset because she couldn't take him out of, of the school, he gives her a cold, angry look, like the look that she saw in Old Tang's eyes or before he died. So you see this connection of her, um, you know, having this these two very different relationships with these men, but which kind of taught her something about love. And so it, it's appropriate that this, the story ends um, not with her and one of these boys or men, but alone when, with her lunch pail in this moment, um, where she almost lost everything but didn't and, and says, you know, she says she never lost anything important, which is not true, right? But uh, because she, she lost this boy she loved in a way, but um, it ends on this, I think, kind of a hopeful note where, I mean, as as um, as Auntie Wang points out at the beginning, she's only 51, 50, maybe 52, 53 at the end of the story, but she um, there's still hope ahead and she's maybe gotten some tools for how to love in the future if, if we want to give it a hopeful end, right? So um, the plot starts with her on her own navigating the world. We, we see her meeting different people along the way and then the end she's alone again but, but has a different take on the world and um, and I think it's fitting that it ends alone. It, it reminds me a little bit of, of Chekhov's story The Darling which is about a woman who um, I highly recommend which she uh, is always trying to find herself in other men and she keeps carrying through these other men and, and they keep, you know, dying or leaving her. And in the end, she's actually falls in love with one of the little boys of the men as a caretaker and has to leave him. But, um, it's about a woman trying to find herself through others. And I think this takes on a more modern turn and she is left with a bit of hope, or at least the reader is in, in my eyes. Um, and just an, a few other things to note about the story. Uh, we talked, a lot of you in your discussions about Pilgrim said that there were things that were not explained um, in a good or bad way, in a satisfying or unsatisfying way. And this story did that nicely, like the the, the subplot in the second half of the story with the socks and when the socks were going to be found out, um, when, when, when Kang would be caught for stealing the socks. It's not really said to us that, oh, he wants these socks because he misses his mom and they're intimate to him and they give him comfort. She never asks him, but we as a reader find that they have this big significance. And so um, it's a nice moment of mystery that's not really followed through or a mystery of there's no backstory. We never know if um, why Granny Lynn is 51 and single, if she ever loved. We get the sense that maybe she didn't and it's never, she never really talks about it. And even when the boy asks her, who is your husband, right? She doesn't say, hey, I spent almost all, you know half a century or whatever uh, completely on my own. Um, she says that's where my husband lives in the city. So he does take on this, this significance to her, but we don't really know what happened before him, right? We just know where she worked and that she's alone. And I think that that works for this story. Um, and, and just on a, on a sentence level, um, the story is very, un, though it's about, you know, a lonely old woman, um, it, it's unsentimental in a, in a, in a very, um, effective way, but it does have kind of these moments of, of, um, of sentiment or higher kind of declaration of, of feeling at the end of some scenes. Um, you know, toward the end, this is just the last line I've ever seen, which is the most important part of any scene. Um, she wonders if this is what people call falling in love, the desire to be with someone for every minute of the rest of her life so strong that sometimes she's frightened of herself. Um, there's, um, you know, on the weekends they sit in the shadow of the mysterious. She wonders if this is a love she missed in her younger years, hand in hand to the dear boy, not asking him to tell her the secret she is not allowed to know. Um, her old body is failing. Her young heart is another ending. Uh, and even if the whole story ends with um, the 3,000 yuan uh, of dismissal, compensation safe in her lunch pail, as are several unopened packages of sock, colorful with floral patterns, souvenirs of her brief love story. So um, it, it's hard to get away with that writing in a story if it's more sentimental or more um, full of this rich emotion but the the motion here is is carried out so cleanly through the the kind of more stark sentences where you have to feel it yourself um, that she could get away with ending you know a story with a line brief love story right um, that it, it feels earned and not like the re the writer is trying to tell you how to feel it's it's earned through the rest of the prose being more more um, more stark in a way um, and I think that is, is, is all I have for you today. So I hope you enjoyed the story as much as I did. And um, after a week, we got this, the, the swing of things. You post in the discussion group, and then you respond to your classmates there uh, for, for you know the questions about the stories. And then um, you share your exercise with your actual group, and you share it with me on Sundays. So you 
do the discussion answers on Wednesdays and then you do the written assignment on Sundays. And um, yeah, I look forward to reading more, more of your work and thanks for a good first week.